What's up America? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over the wood miser shelter we just built. We started building it on January 14th and we finished it on January 22nd. So it didn't take that long to build. Um, I built about 80% of it with the help from my dad and my brother, um, which they only helped on the weekends. So I don't know how, but everything is pretty much level or plumb. Doesn't make any sense. This thing that never happens, guys. I don't know how the heck anything could be level on any project I do, but everything's pretty much perfect. I don't even have words. I mean, I have one glove and I tried to film this four times in the last couple of days, like four times, 20 minutes a time. And it's either like there's wind and you can't hear me because of the mic. I did it the other day and the mic was off. And I did it the day before and the camera died in like five minutes because it was so cold out. So yes, this is the fourth time I am filming this part. I am in the upstairs of our hay barn with pigeons and hay bales. I don't mind the hay bales. Do you know how many diseases those things have? I mean, it's like eight o'clock right now. I can't even film outside because it's so dark. So the things I do for YouTube, I'm just saying, I was just gonna go inside and take a nap maybe, go to sleep for the night. But I've just, I've had enough of this. So I'm, I'm gonna be, I need that piece of paper. No, I didn't. So I'm going to be reading my little script here for the fourth time. Before we get into today's video, I want to thank Ironwood Acres, Tim Parvis, and Lumber Capital Logyard, which is their YouTube channel, so much for having us out. So about two weeks ago, we took the seven and a half hour drive to Pennsylvania, and we went to the Logyard. They have an amazing operation and setup. So a lot of what I'm interested in doing here, they're already doing in Pennsylvania. So they have an LT40, it's pretty much the same one that we're getting. And Emerald was nice enough to train me on the LT40. So my guess is that I ran the mill for about three hours. And in that three hours, I learned a lot. I could pretty much run the mill with no help. It's just the computer part of it, which is really confusing, with like the up down, the pattern, um, auto down, all that stuff. That was a little tricky, but once I get the hang of that, I think it'll be good. So yeah, go check out their YouTube channel. It's Lumber Capital Logyard. I'll have it in the description of the video. All right, let's get into today's video. Okay, so on January 14th, we went to Carroll Concrete Company. I don't remember exactly where they are, but they're in Vermont. Uh, we got three six by three by 18 inch concrete blocks. I'm talking six foot by three foot by 18 inch wide concrete blocks things are huge. They weigh 4,000 pounds each. We hauled them home with our gooseneck. It was our first time using the gooseneck. My dad hit our snowmobile when he was using it. Um, luckily, the snowmobile was not a car because he turned too sharp and kind of pinched the snowmobile and pulled the snowmobile like four feet. But if that was a car, the trailer definitely had license plates on it. So yeah, that day we brought him home. And actually that night, we dug through the ground, which was frozen, probably like, I mean, I can't even do it. It was probably frozen like that much. Um, just frozen solid dirt. I mean, it's the middle of January right now, almost, actually February is next week. It's very, very hard ground. So somehow we managed to puncture through it that night. Luckily we did because the next day everything froze solid. Guys, you got some big blocks. This thing right here? 4,000 pounds. Not 4,000 dollars. 4,000 pounds. This thing's it's like six feet long, right? Yeah, six feet. Six by three by 18. Six by three by 18 is freaking 45 bucks. Dan, say hi to the channel. How's it going? Want to say hi to America? America, how are you? Putting the blocks in was not that easy. You'll be famous one day. What do you want to say? Shake them 
Jamal Harris's fans quote. Come on, remember it? It's time to do what we've been doing every day, and that time, no. It's time to do what we've been doing, and that time is every day. Right? She's a very smart woman. Very smart. <laughs> It's really hard to stand it up and get it plump, um, or it wouldn't tip over and then fill it in with dirt and then still have it plump, and then fill it in with dirt, compact it, still have it plump. <sighs> very, very difficult. But yeah, we did it. There you go, right there. Nice. So the second block went in a lot easier. So the next day was January 15th, it was a Saturday. We went to our local lumber yard, RK Miles, and we got four 12 by 2 by 16 foot um, big laminated beams, I would call them. So basically, with those four beams we got, we made one big beam, which was 4 by 12 by 32 feet long. Um, we used over 130 screws making that beam. So we built it in a way that if you put a string from the bottom of the beam to the bottom of the beam, in the middle, it's an inch higher. So basically the beam is like a little rainbow. You know, it like bows up a little bit. Um, so that'll allow for any future sagging, because um, the last thing you want to do is have it come the other way, and upside down, frowny face, you know? We don't want that because then it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse. So I'd rather have it come down to where it's pretty much level, if not just a little, still rainbow tree. All right, so after we built the beam, we got the six by sixes that we milled at Ironwood Acres Timber Harvest. Or I didn't mill them, Emerald milled them. But we, we got those, we notched them out. Um, so basically the tops are like an L, so the beam sits right into it, perfect. Um, there's a bracket on this side too, so when the beam slid in, we just screwed it right on, didn't move. So the morning we went to go get the beams, it was negative nine outside, but the weather app said it felt like negative 31, and it felt like, I don't even know, it was so cold. We are from Massachusetts, this is our first winter in Vermont, and this is nothing like Massachusetts. I mean, since I've lived in Massachusetts, since I was born, I do not remember it getting below probably five below zero. But here we are tonight, it's gonna be 24 below zero. And right now, I cannot feel the tips of my fingers. I had gloves on, but I'm losing my mind because I filmed this four times, so I just threw them away.
after we notched the 6x6s out, we went over it and we put them on the concrete blocks, put a level across, a uh, string level. Not the most accurate, but somehow it's perfect. I don't know how it got like that. Perfectly level, the beams are same height, so the main beam that goes across, the LVL, is perfectly, it's like dead center level. Yeah, that night we anchored the bottom of the 6x6s to the concrete blocks with some concrete screws and some 90 degree brackets. Um, we're gonna need something else in the future, but that's good for now. I mean, the thing's not gonna move. Okay, so then the day after that, Sunday, we drilled with a hammer drill into our bunker wall. So a bunker, basically the big concrete wall you see in the video, that's a bunker silo, a very old bunker silo. So we had to drill half inch holes into that concrete and then drive half inch by six inch concrete bolts into them and basically we clamp two by sixes to the concrete wall. The reason we're not framing off the top of the bunker is because we're, we plan on putting a roof on that bunker, whether it's a second floor or just a roof, just for the cows. We don't want to build on top of the wall where they're going to build from, so we're building from the inside of the wall so they can still just build like we're not even there. Alright, so after we did that, we um, prepped to put the beam up. So, basically, if we're prepping to put the beam up, we got the skid steer over there, we got some ladders, we got the excavator, a chain, brought the beam over on the gooseneck, um, we chained the middle of the beam, it's perfect like a seesaw, so right in the middle, we chained that. excavator wouldn't even reach up high enough to put the beam on the 6x6s so I had to put the blade down to lift the front of the excavator up just to get the beam up there Next day, we had a big snowstorm. It was Monday. We got about a foot of snow, and we doubled the two by six we put on the uh, bunker wall. All right, the next day, it was freezing. I'm talking like really cool. My dad sent me a picture and it was negative 21, 22, but I had to push through it and I pre-cut all the rafters and all the studs, I'm calling them studs, but they're basically the vertical 2x6s, like these things, that run up and then the rafters will hook onto them and go down. I'm not sure, I'm not a carpenter, so I don't know the exact name for them, but I call them studs. So after I pre-cut almost all the rafters and studs, I brought them all over to where the, we were building the shelter. I rested one end on the big beam. It's looking good! It's getting there. It looks like a building. I can't the top of this thing. So much sawdust. So then the next day, I put all the studs I had up 
um, all the vertical 2x6s and then I attached all the rafters I had to those and I framed like two-thirds of the structure. So I ran out of 2x6s, so my dad on his way home from work had to stop and get some rough cut 2x6s. So while I was waiting for my dad, I cut a bunch of strapping, and I laid it all on the roof, and I screwed it all in. So then the second to last day, January 21st, it started to really look like a building. I put the last rafter and last stud up. We picked the worst, worst month to build this. We could have built it in spring or in the fall. But we had to build it in January. I had to build it in January. I built 80% of this thing alone, which was good because it kept me working, you know? My brother goes to school, my dad works. So I pretty much built most of the structure when on the weekends they helped out a ton, which was great. But during the week, when you're alone working out there almost all day until dark, it's good. It's a good thing because you can actually feel your hands because you're moving so much. You don't have another person to hand you tools. You gotta go get off the ladder, off the roof, and go get your tool. So on the final day, January 22nd, we woke up pretty early and we started working pretty early. My dad and brother were still feeding the cows, so I had to wait for them. So I put up a bunch of strong ties on the ends of the rafters to kind of secure the rafters to the beam so they don't slide. Also, when I was waiting for them, I put some extra screws. They're basically almost lag screws. They're 5 16th inch by 3 and an eighth inch. So after that, I cut the rest of the strapping and I screwed it all on the roof. Didn't take that long, probably like a half hour. After the strapping is up, it was time for the roof. The roof is very easy to put up. It probably took it probably took 10 minutes, 20 minutes to put the actual sheets up, and then it took me about a half hour after everything was up and all the tops were screwed in to screw the rest of the, the roofing in. I did it into dark. It was pitch black out. I couldn't see anything. I had a little light on the screwdriver, but that was it. I was pretty much just doing it all by feel. And then I come out the next morning and all the screws are like perfectly straight. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That was the build of our wood miser shed. Um, we're getting the mill in April. We think before April. The guy keeps saying before April, but he's not giving us a date, so we're not sure. So that's going to be a huge thing on this channel. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to go subscribe to Lumber Capital Log Yard and go check out their channel. If you're into logging or milling or firewood, I mean, they have everything you need to know about running a log yard or a sawmill and firewood logging operation. Uh, I totally recommend their channel. I've been watching them. I've been watching them since they had 500 subscribers and now they have 17.4 thousand. So yeah, it's been pretty cool to watch their channel grow, uh, especially from like such a little amount of subscribers to see where they are now and actually meet them in person which was amazing that was so cool uh, i'm really looking forward to next time i go down and next time they come up and boss me around over our sawmill and what i'm doing wrong